Hi everyone. Today we're going to focus on Venn diagrams, which are a tool that's commonly used in elementary schools to display and organize sets. This is a cover page, is actually a page from an elementary textbook. And it's also going to be an extra credit opportunity for you at some point in this class. So at some point in this class, I'm going to ask you on a test or a quiz to identify in words what the set A, which is the first circle, and the set B represent. So remember that, what A and B represent in words. For now, let's focus on the basic relationships of Venn diagrams. So Venn diagrams often start with a box, and that box is going to represent what's called the universal set. And that's often U. So U is the universal set. And the universal set represents the set of all things that we're considering in the problem. So in this case, I mean, I, I'm an animal lover. Let's say that the universal set represents a set of all animals. The circle within the set is a subset. So it represents some subset of animals. So, for example, I'm a dog lover. Suppose this set, which we'll call D, is a set of all dogs. And what this means is that the set of animals can be divided into essentially two things. The set of all things that are dogs within the circle and the set of all things that are not dogs that are outside the circle. Not circle, right? So it's not, not only not the circle, it's also they're also not dogs. All right, so this is the set of things that are not dogs. You can have multiple circles on a universal set. And again, let's say that the universal set, we're talking about the set of animals. The, when the two circles overlap or intersect, it means they might have some things in common. So again, let's think of this first circle as a set of all dogs, and the circle on the right as a set of all spotted animals. So, for example, um, um, we have uh, we have uh, golden retrievers. We've had those in the past. So we've got golden retriever is a dog, but it's not a spotted dog. Uh, we've got some animals that are spotted, but are not dogs. So, like for example, a jaguar would be a spotted animal that's not a dog. But then there are some dogs that are spotted. So, for example, a dalmatian is a is a dog that's is an animal that's both a dog and spotted. So that's what these represent when the circles are, are in an over, so we overlap or intersect. What's in the middle represents the things that are in both sets. You can also have examples of sets that are basically, they don't overlap, they're called disjoint. So these are called disjoint sets when they don't overlap. It means there's no intersection, there's nothing they have in common. So if this is the set of animals again, then maybe this set is a set of dogs, and this set is a set of cats. And there are nothing, there's no animal that's both a dog and a cat. So that's why the circles would be disjoint, they'd be separate. You can also have circles within circles. So what this means, and again we'll stick with the animal theme, the universal set being the set of animals. Let's say that this set is the set of dogs, the big circle, and this set is the set of uh, some of my favorite dogs, again, golden retrievers. So a uh, golden retrievers. Okay, and again, what this means that all golden retrievers are dogs, right? That's what it means when the golden retriever circles within the dog circle, all golden retrievers are dogs, but there's some dogs that are not golden retrievers. So the ones out here might be, for example, we have a, a, a Havanese. Okay, so he's a, a Havanese. He's, not, he's a dog, but he's not a golden retriever. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use, and what you're going to be asked to do in your homework as well, is use Venn diagrams to display relationships between geometric objects. So here's an example. This is an example from um, from the notes and from homework. Um, use Draw a Venn diagram to represent the relationship between the set of all squares, rectangles, and parallelograms. Now all of those are quadrilaterals.
So I'm going to say that the universal set in this case, so my box, is a set of all quadrilaterals. Okay, that's the universal set. I could have made a universal set the set of all polygons, okay, but I chose to be uh, quadrilaterals. Now, you've got squares, rectangles, and parallelograms. So let's think about how those are related. All squares are parallelograms, and all rectangles are also parallelograms. But there are some parallelograms that are neither rectangles nor squares. So, for example, this parallelogram right here. That, that's a parallelogram, but it's neither a rectangle nor a square. So, amongst the set of quadrilaterals, I have things that are parallelograms. I'll draw that with a big circle. Now, sorry for the circle. It doesn't need to be perfect. So, this is a set of parallelograms, which are P's, we'll call them. Now, within that, some of the parallelograms are rectangles. So, actually, yeah, so some are rectangles, some are not. But all rectangles are parallelograms. Or as if you have a parallelogram, if you have a rectangle, rather, it is a parallelogram. So the set of rectangles, R's, are within the set of parallelograms. Lastly, you have squares. Now, all squares are rectangles. The definition of a rectangle being a quadrilateral with four right angles. So everything that's a square is also a rectangle. But you also have some rectangles that are not squares. So everything that's a square is a rectangle, which means the square circle is going to be within the rectangle circle. But there's some things that are rectangles that are not squares. For example, that long, thinny, long, thinny, excuse me, long, skinny rectangles like that. Okay, that would be something that's a rectangle but not a square. So there's a relationship between parallelograms, rectangles, and squares. The next one, the, the last one we're going to do in this video, is involving kites. So I thought I'd go over uh, the definition of a kite. A kite is a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of congruent and adjacent sides. Adjacent sides means that they share a vertex. So in the example that's marked, I've got two pairs of distinct, which means they're different. So I've got the ones with one bar. So these, the one bar ones, they are, the, they are adjacent because they share this vertex and they are congruent. Then I've got a, another pair. That means what's meant by a distinct pair. They can't be the same ones. So I've got the ones with two bars. The ones with two bars are congruent and they are adjacent because they share that vertex. So that's an example of a kite. Um, this trapezoid is an example of something that's not a kite. So this is a kite. This is not a kite. Be now it has two pairs of congruent and adjacent sides. So for example, this side is congruent to this side. And this side is congruent to that side. And they're adjacent, but they're not distinct. In other words, they overlap. They basically overlap. They both share this side. Distinct means that the two pairs have to be completely separate. So this is not a kite, even though it has two distinct, two pairs rather, of congruent and adjacent sides. But a square is a kite. So this is a kite. And it's a kite because I have this side and that side, which are adjacent, and they share that, um, that, that, that vertex right there. So they're adjacent. That's why they're adjacent. Then I have this side, the left side, the right side, and the bottom side, the base. Those are also adjacent, and they're also congruent. And these two pairs are distinct, which means they're completely separate. So I have two distinct pairs of congruent and adjacent sides, 
which is why a square is a kite. Lastly, a non-square rectangle is not a kite at all because this is one that's not square. You have uh, this side, but none of the adjacent sides are congruent if the, if the rectangle is non-square, if it's not a square. All right, so that's a little bit about kites. Now let's focus on the Venn diagram. Draw a Venn diagram to represent the relationship between squares, rectangles, and kites. So I'm going to start out again with my universal set being the set of quadrilaterals. Now, kites and rectangles, okay, We've already said that squares are kites. So everything that's a kite, okay, in, so all the squares, rather, are kites. Now, some of the rectangles are squares, and so this is the set of kites. All of the squares are in this circle, but I'm not going to draw that quite, quite yet, because I have rectangles. Some of the rectangles are also squares, which are also kites. So I'm going to draw my set of rectangles like that. All right, so this is a set of rectangles. Now, what falls in the middle? What falls in the middle are things that are both rectangles and kites. Rectangles and kites? Ah, if it's a rectangle and it's a kite, it must be a square. So this little intersection right here is a set of all squares. And that's the relationship between squares, rectangles, and kites. Just a quick note, why you couldn't do it like this, if I said that these are kites, these are squares, and these are rectangles, why would that be incorrect? Because what it implies is that there's something right here. There's a, there's a little something right there that's not a square, but is a rectangle and is also a kite. And none of these exist. That's why the square is simply the intersections of the rectangles and the kites.